certainly uh, fact checks things that I never said uh, and concludes that the things I never said were lies. Well, I think they get 10 billion a year, but 5 billion from public. 5 billion from public funds directly, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, and they, are, they use this to spread anti-Irish hatred is the only way to describe it. And they use it too uh, to uh, store up a sense of grievance among the uh, immigrants that have arrived into this country so that they remain hostile. Not just that they simply don't integrate or they simply don't mix with the Irish people or they simply don't become, you know, they, 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 they inculcate a sense of grievance and a sense of hatred for the Irish people. So that instead of these people coming in, especially asylum seekers, if they were genuine asylum seekers, and of course they're not, in large part, 90% of them um, are, are uh, after the entire process of, of appeal after appeal, are refused uh, asylum. And 80% of those who are refused asylum uh, are under deportation order, but they are never sent home. And many of these people uh, get work, get jobs in the NGOs, and, uh, and their job is to spread a sense of grievance and a sense of hatred. And instead of having a sense of, like, so what we're told on one hand is these people are fleeing these terrible war-torn countries and, 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 and fear and famine, you know, uh, murder and death and torture and all kinds of things. But what they're told, and this is really significant, what they're told when they get here is, of course, because, of course, they haven't fled famine or war or any of these kinds they of go things. Back on holiday. Is they get told, they go back on holiday. yeah, many of them do, many of them do. They get told uh, what the Irish treat you terribly, uh, what's got, it's uh, direct provision is inhumane. Having three meals a day in a room to yourself, uh, what's got being taken care of after you supposedly fled a war-torn region, uh, what's got is you inhumane. Well, they do have to deal with bed bugs, to be fair. Do they? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I tell you Irish what. Irish bed bugs, the worst kind. Oh, they were absolutely. Um, well, uh, um, well, we know that the, uh, uh, the, the I think the, the, um, the 10,000 Irish people who are homeless um, would put up with direct provision without calling it inhumane and would very much be happy to be directly provided for. Uh, but nobody seems to be worried about that. And Charlie Flanagan says things like, I do not want to see a single, this is his phrase, and this is fine, within and of itself, it is, as a statement, it's fine. If you're talking about genuine people, uh, he says, I do not want to see a single asylum seeker sleeping in the streets, nor do I. I'd like to see them sleeping back in Somalia. I'd like to see them sleeping back in Syria, I'd like to see them sleeping back in Nigeria, where they're supposed to be uh, comfortable in their Nigerian, Somalian, and Syrian beds. But anyway, with their Nigerian bed bugs, but uh, or whatever, that, that's up to them because that's their country. This is ours. Uh, they can they can do whatever they like in their country. That's that's their that's their own business, and that, that's that should be every country. And then we should be able to do whatever we like in our country, and that should be our business. But Charlie Flanagan is committed that not one single asylum seeker will be sleeping rough on Irish streets. And he says this on a political program uh, uh, while he is a government minister in a government where ten, over 10,000 Irish people are homeless. And that doesn't bother him at all. And that doesn't bother him at all. But not one single asylum seeker must. Not single, well, not one single fraudulent asylum seeker, not sing, one single fraudulent refugee must ever find themselves in the circumstance that the government of this country, Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil, because they are in government together, the stupid debates they're having between the two of them, and Michal Martin saying, that, like, oh, the Fine Gael had le have left the Irish people down in the last uh, four years. You mean while you abstained on every vote that passed through Dáil Éireann so that it could pass through Dáil Éireann so that, uh, um, and you don't take any responsibility 
for the fact that every government action over the last four years that you now say was so terrible, you could have prevented it at any time and you could have uh, caused a general election at, at any time. It's a Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael coalition. After the general election, we might get a Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil coalition. It won't be called that. It's applying confidence again or something. Or we could have the nightmare scenario of uh, we could actually end up, and this is incredible, again, one of the you know, not too many, no, not too many things are incredible to me at this point. But one of the things that is incredible to me is that there is talk of the possibility in a post-general election scenario in this country of a Fianna Fáil Green coalition. That's the government that collapsed the economy in 2008. That's the government that racked up 200 and 20 something odd billion in debt. That's the government that paid the bondholders, the international finance capital speculators, out of my pocket, your pocket, everybody else's pocket, Irish people's pocket, uh, and save the taxpayers in other countries in Europe, by the way. But that's that's neither here nor there because I have sympathy for them too. They're under they're under the same elite control. Um, the fact of the matter is there's talk of the possibility that these people will be in government again. And I'm not talking about the same parties. If it was Fianna Fáil, you could say, oh, well, Fianna Fáil have changed now. No, their leader was a cabinet minister. The leader of the Green Party was a cabinet minister in the government that destroyed the economy, in the government that caused the greatest economic collapse in the history of the state. The only time since British rule that the economic sovereignty of the nation was handed over entirely as opposed to being you know manipulated and influenced but was handed over entirely to a foreign body since the foundation of the state since the end of british rule this there is a possibility and this is what the commentaries are talking about of that government with the same people being re-elected in a, a week and a half's time. Now, if that happens, one really just has to, well, I never despair, so I'm not going to say despair, but one would, uh, a, a normal person, they might, might, like uh, an ordinary person might despair uh, that that could happen, and that could happen so quickly. So, and, and you know, 